Okay, here we are with the next test uh, with our little Tesla circuit here. There's been some guys on the forum that have been asking about the meter accuracy at those frequencies and also seen on TK's replication video the question was also being asked as to how accurate those meters are when operating at a high frequency like this. At the moment the system is going flat out as far as frequency goes. Uh, I can't quite remember what that was but I did mention it and show that in the previous video. We also tried to show with the scope that the meters were reading accurately. So um, I guess the only other thing I can do is actually use one meter out of the three identical meters to show you that they are indeed reading, reading accurately. So at the moment um, this meter here is on the negative side of the input so of course we have our black to the negative through this meter and then out through the meter and the red goes onto the negative input of the system. Most of you will know this but there are some that are just starting up and asking questions as to why these two leads seem to be on the opposite polarity. That's simply because that's how you hook the meters up. This one here is coming off the positive side going through the meter and back into the positive input of the circuit if I can grab this without pulling it off the terminal you can indeed see it does go to that meter just so there's no snake oil tricks going on here as I seem to mention okay so I have the scope at the moment hooked up across the input the probe of course on the positive input of the circuit and the ground on the negative and of course our scope is zeroed in and that is the waveform we have across the circuit at the moment that is being generated by the wave generator. Now the only way I could think of doing this to show you that these meters are indeed accurate um, at this frequency so I'm using this third meter we are all set on milliamps each meter this third meter here I have, well, I haven't yet, but it's going to be hooked up onto the LEDs. So we're coming off the positive side of the LED and we're going to be going into the meter and then out of the meter we're going to be going into this fourth LED which is the same size, same colour as those three, same LED. And of course then we come out of the negative side of that LED and go into the negative side of these LEDs here. Now for those of you that have seen the circuit you will know that these LEDs are hooked directly up to the input and then we have the rest of the circuit coming off the negative and positive rails of the input. Uh, there was also the question asked if my diodes are around the correct way in the circuit diagram and they are indeed around the correct way. All I can say is build it and see how it works. Uh, that is why I've opened sources so as you guys can make the decision as to what's happening. Um, so that's what we're doing here and what I want you to look carefully at is the waveform across our input which is what this these two meters here are trying to read and that is what is in question whether these meters can read at that high frequency accurately. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up this fourth LED to the uh, input or the output of these three LEDs which is going through this meter. So that is where the uh, question um, kind of becomes answered or almost certainly becomes answered with this meter and these two are correct. We're putting 10.27 milliamps 
into this LED at the moment, <coughs> which would also mean that each one of these is drawing 10.2 milliamps. And of course we have our little orange one out the front here, which is uh, what I'm calling the output of the system. This is also an output, um, but this is the one I'm using to drive direct load and I can change this load uh, to whatever I want. The more load I put on the system, the more negative this current goes. So what I'm going to do now, uh, just to show you that um, it is indeed this frequency that's going through this meter that's giving us our 10.5 milliamps. So I'm going to take the scope off of the input and I'm going to hook it across the LED itself. And as you can see, um, with our nice bright LED, that the signal that these two meters here are trying to read is identical the signal that this meter here is reading now. This meter is showing us 10.32 milliamps and these are 15 milliamp LED at 2.5 volts and we currently have about 2.2 volts across those LEDs. As you can see on the scope we have 2.2 volts on the positive side. Now the LEDs also fire when it goes negative because our potential difference still is around 2.2 volts. And I am set on the low set on we are set on the two volt divisions. So we have one, two, all up we have about 2.2, 2.3 volts across um, those LEDs. So that is exactly what this LED would be drawing at that voltage. So that um, shows us that these scopes are indeed reading, reading the uh, pulse current accurately because this one is indeed reading exactly the same or the exact same frequency is being passed through this meter. As you can see, that's what is being passed through these two. So that's what we have at the moment. <coughs> now input voltage uh, to the system is about 4.5 volts and this cap in question on the circuit um, is what I'm using as a reference cap which shows about 4 volts because um, it's about where I have the trigger set on the voltage um, which is actually the maximum output for the circuit and uh, we have a diode as well so it's a 0.5 volt loss across that diode so it's about 4.5 volts in the system as far as our peak voltage goes which you can see the traces our current lies between the 2.2 2.3 voltage range but our peak to peak voltages are about 4.5 volts <coughs> so there you have it <coughs> we've used the scope to show that the meters are accurate and we've also used another identical meter across the LED with the same uh, signal going through it showing the exact milliamp draw that this LED would be pulling driven at our 2.3 volts. Okay next we're going to be looking at scope shots across the whole circuit which many of you have been waiting for. I'm also going to show you something really fantastic. Um, the waveform we get by placing my smaller Tesla pancake by filler coil on top of this one. Um, the waveform off that is absolutely awesome and that might show you why we're giving this effect here. Right, well it's cheers for me and uh, we'll see you next video.